There we go. Good morning. This is Kevin Barefoot with Winthrop Intelligence. Welcome to another WinAD Google Hangout where today we're going to be talking with Marcus Jennings, uh, the newly hired Associate Athletic Director for External Affairs at Sacramento State. Marcus, how are we doing today, man? I am well, thank you. It's a great day to be in Northern California, as usual. Sunny, hot, but uh, we love it. Excellent, excellent. You, you recently moved out to Sacramento. Uh, do, you, have, do you have any boxes unpacked yet, or some, or how's no. the move coming along? <laughs> that is a good question. We are probably only a third of the way unpacked, so we're scrambling in the morning, the wife and kids, but uh, we're making do, so it's all fun, though. Excellent, excellent. Well, you know, we've had the chance, uh, you know, via these Google Hangouts and some other panels that we presented to interview, really just some some leaders in the NCAA over the last couple of years. But I got to tell you, I'm as excited about this interview today as I have been for any of them, and the reason is that Marcus uh, was the first participant in our WinAD leadership development program. And if you're not familiar with the program, here's the 30 second uh, here's the 30 second recap. If you are an NCAA administrator and you are interviewing for a senior leadership role in a Division I or Division II athletic department, we will provide free temporary access to the WinAD database to help you prepare for that interview, even if your current school is not a WinAD client. Uh, access to WinAD means that you can have the best financial data available anywhere. Uh, allows you to study the institution you're interviewing with in detail, formulate your own strategic vision backed by reliable analysis, and, and ultimately just help you articulate your strategy during the interview process. So the program's simple. We want to help administrators seize your next career advancement opportunity and accelerate your career ex ascension uh, by giving you unparalleled market data as you prepare for the interview. So Marcus was the first enrollee in the program. Uh, he obviously got the job, and so we're excited to hear from him today about his strategy going into the interview, how he prepared, uh, here's some tips uh, about how other administrators can maybe put their best foot forwards in the next job interview, and as kind of a bonus, uh, Marcus has been willing to share with us uh, this detailed spreadsheet that he created and sent to the search committee after the interview where he detailed you know, areas where he can make an impact and, and, and kind of laid out a plan. Uh, of how to achieve those goals. So it's a really nice glimpse at kind of the tactical strategy of how of how successful administrators are uh, are tackling job interviews. So uh, excited to to have you, Marcus. Let's get right into it, man. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us tell us what you were doing prior to applying at Sacramento State and how you heard about the leadership development program. So I'll start with um, really how I heard about the program, and again, just just the power of social media. Um, I follow WinAD on Twitter, and it was as simple as, you know, someone on your team posted it out that, hey, here's a new program opportunity for those who are interviewing, and um, as soon as I saw it, probably five minutes after, I reached back out, and um, for me, it was just perfect timing because at the time, I'm transitioning out of Kent State, and really looking again, as you said, to go to a senior leadership, more responsibility in intercollegiate athletics, and the, uh, I had the Sacramento State interview already scheduled, and so I was already doing my normal preparation, but this just allowed me to take it to an even higher level. So again, perfect timing on my end. You were quick on the draw, too. It was literally like an hour or two. Yeah, I tweeted, tweeted it out, and uh, we, I thought, man, this, this, might, this thing might take off. So it's, <laughs> it's good. You were quick. Why, so when you saw the, the, the program, why did you think it would be helpful? You, you mentioned you were already doing your, some research. Right. So you, you, you maybe had to compare manual labor-intensive research with, right. with WinAD, but why did you think it, was, it would be helpful for you? Well, because um, I've heard about Winthrop Intelligence and some of the services you guys offer. I never had a chance to experience it firsthand, but you know, as you know, you always want to be as prepared as you can for any interview. Uh, so I just thought that, didn't know how, to what extent the information you guys had, but I just thought that, hey, the more information I could gather, the better prepared I could be. And again, as I said before, I didn't want to keep reiterating, this took me to a whole different level. So. For the folks that haven't gone through an interview process for a senior leadership role, 
can you share kind of what that process looked like for you? You know, I, I know a lot of folks will do sometimes do phone interviews first, and then kind of round right. two is in person. Can you kind of take us through what the process was for you uh, at Sac State? Right. So, so for me, you know, especially being located in Ohio and um, here in California where Sac State is, uh, my first interview wasn't a telephone. It was a Skype interview. Okay. And so um, what was interesting is um, going through that, I think more of the initial interview was just more of, hey, tell me about a time you've done this or have you done that? You know, kind of the typical type of interview because they want to see how you interact. Um, and what's great is, like I said, the video piece. And I think more and more um, institutions and, you know, administrators are cutting out the phone piece and doing the Skype because they want to see your – you know, facial expressions, you know, all those type of things, how you react to questions. And so uh, with me, I would say preparation for the WinAD is more helpful when you get the in-person interview compared to the telephone or the initial Skype interview. Sure, absolutely. So so when you begin pre preparing for that uh, in-person interview, you know, really specifically, how, how did you prepare? What, what information, when you got in the system, what information did you identify as being most critical, and what did you really kind of dig into when you when you got access to the system to prepare for the the in person? Okay, good question. And and literally, it's just simple, and it's something that you know everyone knows, but just kind of reiterate: looking at the job description, looking at the duties that they're looking for, skill sets. Uh, I took it upon myself again, external. Affairs is really just, you know, how you're generating revenue for the department, you know, uh, whether it's, again, my categories, you know, from donations and contributions, you know, I have ticket sales, media rights and licensing, and then also some of the, uh, some of the agreements, you know, the vendor agreements. So I knew I wanted to concentrate on those four areas, and I just broke it down to where you are now. Uh, where I think I could take the organization and how I can get them to that destination and just made it that simple. And so you, it sounds like you were looking at Sac State kind of individually, where are you at? But did you also do some kind of peer benchmarking to understand, you know, where they are relative to maybe folks in the region or conference peers in terms of things like ticket sales and contributions, yes. that type of thing? And, and that was good, yeah, for me. So my strategy was, number one, Let's look at the peer institutions, and that's the Big Sky Conference. So I've looked uh, again. This was where Win AD had a abundance of information. So I looked at uh, the majority of the schools in every category that I just stated of um, where they are as far as those categories again. But then I also started look at regionally. So like here with Sac State, there's 23 um, California state uh, institutions. And so I started to look at where Sac State was also compared to those other institutions in this region. And so I took a little bit further, just, you know, besides the big sky, but here in California and um, schools that are also in the California State region and see where we are in comparison. How did that inform your ability to, to make some of the projections that you did on your spreadsheet, which we're going to take a look at next? But how did that data conference and regionally inform you know, your confidence in saying, here's what we can get in that next multimedia rights deal. Here's where we can take ticket sales. You know, the, my first thought is, I would say, hey, first of all, Sac State has had a lot of success on the field and in between the white lines. And so when I looked at some of the um, items or some of the deals that were in current place, and I looked at some of the other institutions, I thought, well, hey, you know, um, we've had success in these areas, but our deals may not have been to par of what they could be. And so I, I think I just had that in the back of my mind, like, hey, you know what? Like everything else, you don't want to devalue your own product, and you shouldn't do that with any of your agreements, any type of deals that you have. And that was kind of my mindset, again, going into it. And, and when, you, thought, when you talk about deals, you're talking about things like apparel, multimedia, those, those external third-party vendor deals. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then also when I looked at now, again, for me, my background, fundraising. So when I looked at, okay, where we were as far as the contributions or the donations, 
Um, and then looking at, again, you look at the size of the institution, you know, I had to factor in, you know, this is the capital of California. So looking at the wealth in the community. Um, and that's where I kind of put that formula together to say, hey, you know what, from what I can see from the outside, because you never know what, um, you know, your donors that they have currently on board, but what someone like you or I can see from the outside, there's wealth in this community. And so I think, you know, even being conservative, we could do X, Y, and Z as far as numbers. Sure. And that's a great point, too. One of the things that you said to me in a conversation offline was that you really looked at, you know, the information about the city, you know, the, the population, demographics. And I think that's a progressive way as well to, to think about preparing for interview, not just looking at the institution, but looking at the surrounding area in terms of the makeup of the community. You know what, it really has, and, and that's funny you brought that point up because speaking to one of committee members afterwards, um, she paid me the greatest compliment. She said, Marcus, you were giving us data uh, in regards to the state of California and the state of education in the California that they had no idea. Uh, I was giving them factual information that they could go back and even check because I wanted to say, hey, um, I understand not only your institution, but where you are as far as the state, you know, California is a little bit different than some other states sure. <laughs> where um, you are in the state of California and economics on that end. Smart, smart. So let, let's take a look then, you know, we're talking about doing some of these projections and, and you know, kind of showing the search committee where you feel like you can take Sacramento State. Let's take a look then at this um, leave behind okay. that you sent to the search committee after your interview. Can you see that okay, Marcus? Yes, that's perfect. Okay, great. So this is uh, an Excel spreadsheet that Marcus created and sent to the search committee and, and really specifically laid out. To, to me, this is a, a, a super strong kind of tactical strategy to demonstrate your understanding of, of the opportunities at hand there in Sacramento. Walk us through this document and, and kind of what we're seeing on the screen here. You got different sections. You right. know, talk about talk about how you laid this thing out and what your thinking was when, when you put this together. So even looking at, um, you know, made it pretty clear. I really want to talk about the top four areas for revenue growth opportunities. And that's where, you know, my starting with section one, you know, donations, contributions. And so I, I was able to see that Sac State, you know, had a decrease um, last year. And what was great, again, with the WinAD information, I was able to be exact. And I really enjoyed this um, process because, I'm a finance guy by trade as far as education, so I'm a numbers guy. <laughs> so um, putting those numbers together from the WinAD database was really fun for me to see, okay, um, I can give you exact numbers, where you are now, you know, where I think, um, again, year over year, like in the first section, a 20% increase year over year, and I mm -hmm. uh, projected that out over a few years, and then how we can get there. So, uh, you know, Sac State, is just, I'll put it this way, it's a great time to be here. Um, there's a blank slate, and I think um, right now, looking at opportunities, um, our staff is really excited about new ways to tackle um, some issues that everyone has across the country. So I, got, I broke it down to how we can get there to the major gift level, to the annual fund level, and I think that was really powerful when these guys can see not only did you understand where we are, but had a plan on how to get there. Yeah, and you can see here in the sheet, I'm going to highlight this a little bit. You, you, it looks like you laid out you know, fiscal year 12 and 13. You, you talked about specificity, 36, you know, 36.6 percent drop that you were able to to kind of calculate, and I think we actually calculate in the system for you. Yes. Uh, that, that shows you what the drop is, and then and then you and then you went beyond that to say, look, here's what we can do in the upcoming three years, and then and then here are the the ways that I'm going to do that. So, right. Really concise presentation of your strategy there. As we scroll on, you know, ticket sales, you got licensing and multimedia rights. Right. What are some of the key takeaways from these other sections? So I'll look here, and I, I think what was interesting. You know, ticket sales, obviously, you know, again, um, the revenue portion of this, you know, ticket sales, we were down the last couple of years, you know. So now I even had a chance to look at uh, 
not only I saw, you know, go, even going on their website, look at ticket pricing. I even broke it down. So, okay, here's how much their ticket pricing is, and here's the revenue. So it, I kind of backed into a number of what their average attendance is even. You know, and that's something I was able to talk to. I didn't have to put that on paper. Mm -hmm. but then, you know, my projections, looking at their strategic plan that they have posted, Sac State, we have it posted on our website. And that's how I really came up to my projection numbers of where we're trying to get to in the next areas. And it was, again, just partnering with their strategic plan that they already have posted on their website. And so that's where now you get to the third section. Um, you know, the year goal really just to eliminate that decline and even just increase 5%. And then going down to the multimedia rights section, um, the same type, again, same strategy. You know, where you are now, you know, I want to build a strong relationship with our Learfield partner and um, also, you know, the Hornet Club, making sure that unit, these two units work well together. You know, don't overextend prospects. And so, like I said, it was all good, but another piece, going back to um, my conversations with you and Learfield and, I mean, uh, with uh, WinAD getting information, um, I had a panel discussion as well during my on-campus interview, which was about a day and a half, almost two days. But the panel discussion, I was able to even use the terminology that they were looking for um, as far as, again, the base hurdle amounts, and then the, the guarantee amounts, those type of things. And so, again, being able to speak the jargon, um, that helped, I think, a lot for them to say, okay, this guy really knows this area. So you dug, you literally dug into the contracts of other individual schools and looked at how those deals were structured to be able to kind of make a reasonable projection of what Sac State's next deal might look like, which you're going to be in charge of, of handling. Exactly, exactly. So, I, yeah, I had a chance to see, okay, our peers in the big sky, they're at XYZ level. Now, what I think for us is we can get to that level, um, but I see it like right now, we only have a revenue share model. You know, let's go to a different model and see if we can, um, again, bring that revenue number up. Guaranteed so, rights fees, right? You, right. You know. Study. I, I tell you, we I did a at, at NACTA this year. I did a panel of uh, ads paying it forward, and it was a, a great group of guys that that talked about uh, you, you know this topic, career advancement, and kind of putting your best foot forward in, in, in career advancement opportunities. And Stan Wilcox, the athletic director at Florida State, it, it, towards the end of the panel said, "You got to teach the course. Yes. You know it better than anybody else." Yeah. And it sounds like you were. It sounds like you were teaching the course in that panel discussion. Yes, and you know what? That is a perfect point because, you know, there's, and many people may have experienced this, but there's times where you feel during your conversations, whether it's during a panel or one-on-ones, that you're teaching the course because you kind of see their eyes light up and you can even tell by the questions that they ask you back because uh, there were several times I would give a response and they would say, well, Marcus, how would you do this? And you could tell that was maybe something they were looking for and I already had an idea of what direction, again, my strategy of what, how it would get us to a certain point. But there was an aha moment for me as well during, I say, that panel discussion where I was like, okay, I think I'll have something here. And that was when you were using the terminology and, and talking really specifically about how the deals are being structured? Exactly, exactly. And that's, you know what, like everything else, having a plan, not just being in general, not just talking about how you did at a previous institution, but how you can implement it at their institution. You, you mentioned earlier that you got feedback from the search committee that you were kind of telling them stuff about the state of California that, that maybe they didn't know. W was there any other feedback that you got during the process, either from the search committee you know, or, or folks that you were interacting with about your level of preparation and about how you presented yourself, you know, like kind of kind of things that maybe aspiring administrators want to be right. conscious of? I think, you know what, if you can, uh, my advice would be trying to learn the culture that they already have set in place. Um, feedback I got from my AD at the time was, you know, not Marcus, not only was separating you from other candidates was your preparation for information, but you understanding our situation. Um, case in point, 
you know, we're at the point at Sac State where uh, we talk about, I use the phrase all the time, no gift is insignificant. So uh, we're telling our donors, hey, you know what, you may not be able to make a six-figure gift or whatever the case may be, but we want you part of, in our case, the Hornet Club. So no gift is insignificant. And he specifically told me when I was on board, maybe a week or two after, that was something that resonated with him that I understood the culture of Sac State and where they are right now in their um, process. Excellent, excellent. You, you mentioned as part of the process that, that you were able to kind of gain some support from folks outside of the search committee. You, know, you talked right. about talking with coaches. Right. Uh, and, and other kind of key constituents aside from the search committee, what did you do to, 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 to be able to connect with those parties and, and kind of continue to distinguish your candidacy? Right. I, I, you know what's interesting? And I got a chance to, um, while I was on campus, to meet with football coach, maybe like 15, 20 minutes, men's basketball coach. And uh, what was interesting is, and this is something, again, you just have to be – and for lack of a better term, a student of the game. Um, we had our, our softball coach. She was an interim, but during my process, she had got named um, the head coach permanently. And so I didn't even get a chance to meet her, but I sent her an email, you know, congratulatory note. And, and then we started an exchange via email. And so even from that piece, now, since I'm on board, you can tell our relationship may be a little bit different than some of the other coaches that I'm building right now. And, you know, with a football coach, it was interesting is even during the process, um, we were talking about some of the needs of, obviously, coaches, needs of their own program. You know, same thing with men's basketball. And they both, I mean, my football coach, he was taking notes when I was talking to him. <laughs> what, was the, what was the topic? What were, what were you talking so about when he was we taking were, notes? So, like, with football. Our football coach is great, and he's really making a big push to, um, like everyone, bring his former players back into the fold. And so he was asking me, hey, you have any experience doing this? And again, it's back to um, teaching the course. That's in my wheelhouse. That's something I've been passionate about even before I got into this industry with me being a former student athlete. And so I was giving him ideas on things I think he could implement, the low-hanging fruit, you know, um, things that I've seen that work at other places as well. But he was like, you know, wow, okay, let me, you know, so he was, so I knew he was, he was taking notes. And then my basketball, men's basketball coach, the same thing. You know, he was talking about now with him, uh, some of the vendor rights deals that kind of perked his interest because, you know, he was thinking like, Hey, you know what? We could be doing something a little bit differently. And you kind of reaffirmed it to me during this conversation and so that's kind of how I got their buy-in even before, you know, I got to the committee or to the panel discussions, those type of things. So your familiarity with the apparel deals of folks in the Big Sky and others regionally, you were able to talk in an educated way to your basketball coach about that and kind of highlight some opportunities to maybe improve the next deal with, with you at the helm. With it, yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, here's another one. You know, they're going through a negotiation – with um, their car vendor, and you know, I was able to talk to him about that process, and so he was. If so funny because of that experience, that was during my interview. When I got here, one of the first things he said, Marcus, I made sure I told our business office and our AD that you need to be in all these discussions <laughs> while they're going on. So my next, he's my, my next advocate. Question. My next question was going to be how how important do you think those interactions were to your hiring? It, I just, you just answered it right there. So the coaches right. are going to bat for you after the interview. Right. They're already my advocate, even though I, literally I was less than two weeks in the office. You know, like, Marcus, you got to, you know, meetings were set. Marcus, you got to make sure you're in these meetings. And so now, again, they're my advocates when I didn't even have to uh, make sure, you know, myself ask to be in certain meetings. Were, were there some other, key, you know, either key moments or kind of key takeaways from the process? We talked about prep for the, you know, the, the, we talked about the Skype interview and prep for the in-person interview, the kind of town hall interaction you had, talking with coaches. Were there other kind of portions of the interview process that you may want to share that 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 were that worked well for you? You know what? I think for me, and it was interesting because you referenced um, 
your panel discussion while you're at NACTA this year. And I kind of took away a lot from that. There's no certain way that everyone should do it. There's not a blueprint that everyone should do it. It's a feel process. Because, you know, I know we had some folks, you know, perfect example, um, AD at Green Bay and Bowling Green. They both had a philosophy, and I saw those um, hangouts before, but they had a philosophy of they had their documents and presented them during their interview process. Right, the one one page leave behinds. Chris right, Leeson behind. and Mary Ellen Gillespie. Yep. But then with Babcock, during your discussion, he made a point to say, you know what? That would kind of turn him off if someone has something like that. So, um, and I was already done with my interview process, but for me, my field during the process was I had all this information with me. I even had copies for everyone that was on the search committee, but I did not give this to them while I was on campus. I took it more. Uh huh. Go. I was gonna say, do you in, in your? Uh that's a great point that it's a feel process. You, you, you know, if you're hitting on all cylinders verbally, right. and you don't need the handout, then 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 that worked well for you in this situation. Exactly, because I think it, it just it gave me the opportunity um, when I sent my thank you notes to the search committee to say I literally said, hey, um, besides enjoying the opportunity to speak with everyone, um, after giving it more thought listening to everyone on campus, um, here's something I put together that I think can really benefit um, Sacramento State Athletics. And I attached this to my note when I sent back. And again, this is more feedback I got from the search committee when I got back. They said right there, that just took it's it over done, the top. Deal. That, that was the, what's the word? That's the icing on the cake. Right. <laughs> that was the icing on the cake. To, to to kind of sum it up here, man, uh, and this is this is this is phenomenal feedback. I mean, this is uh, like I'm ready to make a donation to the Hornet Club. Just just here, just listening to your to your passion here. Um, are there any other tips that you can provide, you know, to administrators who may be watching this and that that you know are preparing for an interview or you know one inevitably is coming down the road? Any other just pieces of advice you can share? You know, I think it's just go back probably to our last point, and that's. Um, be prepared as much as you can because for me personally I think my preparation allowed my personality to show even more it allowed my um, myself to be more relaxed you know because literally there was not one question I wasn't prepared for and I think now me being relaxed my responses was just probably showing that much more confidence in what I felt uh, we could do here at Sac State so I'll say prepare like you can, um, and all those you know all those things you have read during graduate school or during school that say hey practice, practice in front of the mirror, practice with a spouse or something. That's all very true and very. I was, in, I was in front of the mirror 30 minutes ago, like you know rerunning the intro to this thing, and I've done a, right. you know, a dozen of these things. <laughs> right. So that's uh, that. That would be my advice. Just you know prepare, practice, because that will allow your personality to really show during that final uh, interview. Last question, we'll get you out of here on this. You know, given the level of preparation and, and confidence that you had, uh, your knowledge of Sacramento State uh, coming into the interview and then you get hired, does that impact your ability to kind of hit the hit the ground running? I mean, did, did you see like a kind of, does that, did that translate into you being able to, to make an impact sooner or just feeling like you're, you're ready to contribute right. faster? I think, perfect point, I think because of that preparation and because I've already had an opportunity to kind of look at, hey, what my strategic plan will be the next one, two, three, five years, now I have the long-range goals, I have the short-range goals, and now, now me being actually in the chair, I can just tweak them a little bit, maybe some things I didn't know when I was on the inside, but the strategy, the plan is already in place. And so, again, that's what you just said, allows me to now look at, okay, I already have the strategy. Let's do my listening. You know, I hit the ground listening, learning from everyone across campus. Now I can slowly but surely implement these ideas that I have on paper already. Words of wisdom for Marcus Jennings for, for new hires. Hit the ground listening. I love that. Yes. I love I heard that. that. 
I, I can't. I won't go take too much credit from it. I heard it from my buddy uh, at Clemson, um, Davis Babb. He said that to me. That's something years ago. I've never forgotten. And I, I'm thankful for people like himself and others in the industry, Jim Center, or everyone who's helped me along the way. Awesome. Well, Marcus, we, we really appreciate the time, man. It's been a pleasure uh, talking with you today. Some phenomenal feedback. I mean, it's just a, just a great rundown of, of how you prepared for and, and, and obviously nailed the interview. Uh, hitting on all cylinders is an understatement. You, you, it sounds like you did an unbelievable job. And congrats on the new gig there. Hope you get those those boxes unpacked soon. Yes. And, uh, and everything settled in. And uh, we'll certainly look forward to to talking with you soon. But we appreciate the time today, and appreciate everyone joining the webinar, the Google Hangout. And I hope you have a great rest of the week. Thank you. And I, I want again just say thank you to WinAD for all their help because um, firmly I believe. If it wasn't for that access, I wouldn't be here today. So thank well, you. Thank again. you so much. Our pleasure, man. We'll talk to you soon, Marcus. All right. Take care. Thank Bye -bye. you.